to serve as your minister this day, I'm going to begin with our reading from the book of the month, Love Poems from God. I've actually chosen one short poem and one kind of middling poem for our readings today. The short poem is called The Sun Never Says. Even after all this time, the sun never says to earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights the whole world. That poem was written by Hafiz, 13th century mystic Islamic uh, Sufi mystic. This poem was written by uh, St. Catherine. She was a Dominican nun. She was a writer. She was a caregiver. She was truly a mystic. Also lived in the 1300s, 1307 something she was born. This poem is called No One Will Begrudge Me. I talk about it sometimes with him, all the suffering in the world. Dear God, I have prayed. How is it possible All the horrors I have seen, all the atrocities you allow us to commit when you, God, are ever standing so near and could help us. Could we not hear your voice say, no, with such love and such power, never again would we harm? And God replied, Who would understand if I said that I cannot bear to confine a wing and not let it learn from the course it chooses? But God, what of a man walking lost in a forest, weeping and calling your name for help, and unknown to him he is heading for a covered pit with sharp spears in it that will maim his flesh when he crashes through the trap? Yes. Why don't I remove every object from this world that could cause someone to weep? Yes. Why don't I speak in a way that could save a life? I opened up my hand, and the infinite ran to the edges of space, and all possibilities are contained therein. All possibilities, even sorrow. In the end, nothing that ever caused one pain will exist. No one will begrudge me. The absolute innocence of all within my creation takes a while to understand. I want to uh, invite you to join me in declaring this month's affirmation. Please stand and with conviction speak these words of truth. The circle of love is complete. It comprehends all, includes all, and binds all together with cords of everlasting unity. I cannot depart from its presence nor wander from its care. My love is complete within me. The love of God binds me to itself and will not let me go. I make a home for you, oh my wonderful love, and we journey through life hand in hand. I sit in your presence and learn the wondrous things you will tell me, for you are God. The circle of love is complete. That's Andy Harrison. (laughs) Catherine on keys singing some backs there I like it there's a critical message in that song isn't there it's a pretty strong image how many of you have a bullet lodged in your chest it's inviting you to be its guest it's asking you to step into what it has to offer you It's giving you an opportunity to learn and grow and deepen. You know, I'm having an opportunity to learn and grow and deepen in my life right now. Um, I hate to confess this in front of you all, but I have a neighbor that I don't like. (laughs) (laughs) It's an interesting 
interesting situation to be in. And you know, and I, I, I always think about this because I am commanded to love my neighbor as myself, aren't I? <laughs> I am commanded to love God first and then to love my neighbor as myself. And God gave me a neighbor that is just not very lovable. <laughs> and so I thought I'd better look into this a little bit, and I thought I'd better think about, well, what is my neighbor? And I even looked it up in the dictionary. It says my neighbor is someone who is nearby or one I am allied to. Ooh. My neighbor is someone who is nearby or someone I am allied to or allied with. And I thought, well, you know, if I really stretch it, we both pay into the HOA. So we're kind of allied that way. (laughs) And we both mow our lawns and keep up the front. And so we're kind of allied that way. And we both put our garbage cans out on the same day. So we're kind of allied that way. So you see how I begin to look for the things, the places that we are allies Because all month long we're talking about the power of love and when I start to think about my neighbor that I don't like, I suddenly begin to realize that it's entirely possible that the things in my neighbor I don't like are the things in me I do not like. What? (laughs) It's just a possibility. I haven't confirmed it yet. (laughs) But you see, I've got this bullet lodged in my chest and it's... uh, guest in my life to teach me something because it could be that how well I love my neighbor is entirely dependent on how well I love myself. Am I an ally to myself? How much do you love you? Just because. Not because of what you've done or what you've earned or not because of who else, you've lo- who, who, who else has loved you, not because of what you've seen in the world. How much do you just love you? And I think it could be just slightly possible that the answer to that question lies in how much you love others. Right. Right. And now, let's just all take that home and ponder on it for a week. We'll come back next Sunday, and we'll kind of go a little deeper. Because You know I'm joking, but, but the fact is, that's something we could rest with for a long time, isn't it? It's a question that we could rest with for a long time. And I invite you to consider that we love as we allow ourselves to love. Because remember, we've been talking all month long about love. We've been riding the love month wave here in February, haven't we? And what we've talked about is we are created by love, from love, put here on earth from love, in order to be love, in order to learn love, in order to love more fully and be more of what God would have us be. We defined love in the first week as unconditional positive regard that actually does something. Yes? And we talked about how Charles Fillmore says that love insists that everything is good, and by refusing to see anything but good, good must eventually have to unfold. We talked about love as as God's self-givingness, the self-givingness of spirit to its own expression, which is, by the way, what we are, isn't it? So we've talked about love in all of these ways and now it's time to turn to how well do we love our neighbor? How well do we love ourselves? In fact, do we see ourselves as worthy of love? Do we see ourselves as worthy of not just the love of others but loving ourselves? Now, I don't know about you, but um, I kind of think that I have a lot of thoughts that run around in my head that I never share. Do you do that? Do you have your secret things that you think about that you never share with anybody? I think we're kind of all a lot the same in that way. In fact, I'm guessing that my neighbor that I'm not too fond of probably has their own secret thoughts kind of running around in their head, don't they? 
And in that way, I think we are all the same. And oftentimes, those secret thoughts have to do with how not worthy we are. Yes? How many of you have said something unkind to or about yourself in the last 24 hours? So maybe it's not even that big a secret, is it? But you see, we're talking today about how to be worthy, how to anchor in the love that God is because we have come here to be love and to express love. And in order to love, we must be worthy. What does it mean to be worthy? Well, the word worth means value. Having value. Do you see yourself as having intrinsic value? Like you're important just because you're here. You are worthy of the infinite love, the power and the presence, the love of God expressing as you, given to you, accepting, breathing that power of love every moment of your life simply because you are here. Not because of anything you've ever done. Not because of anything anyone has ever told you. Not because of anything else, but the fact that you are on planet Earth and you are breathing. How you doing? I am worthy of a satisfying, fulfilling career. I am worthy of a family that honors and respects me. I am worthy of living a life that is satisfying and fulfilling to me. This is who and whose I am simply because of my intrinsic value, because I am created in the image and likeness of infinite love, And all it does, remember the self-givingness of spirit to itself. This is God love. And so in order to measure, are we worthy? Am I worthy? Let's ask ourselves this question. Do I love myself and others as God loves myself and others? How many of you have ever heard that God is love, right? I believe it. And actually, this is kind of a question we talked about in class last week or week before, I can't remember. You know, ultimately, really, God is neutral, you guys, right? I mean, God is neutral. It is an energetic. It is a source. It is an energy. It is a presence. It is an intelligence. It is an idea. It is a mind. It is all of those things, and it is neutral. But because it creates, we create... And we create God as love because we say so. Did you hear me? Has anybody ever, any time in your life, created a God that was not love, a God of judgment, a God of fear? Anybody ever done that? See, God is love because we say so. Because by the creative power that is instilled in us by the infinite mind, we say God is love. And you know... I really believe this is the objective truth, but I also have to say, when I look out in the universe, when I look at creation, what I see is something that is life-giving, life-affirming, yes? And to me, that's one of the characteristics of love. So God is love makes a lot of sense to me, right? Life is always for itself. It's always propagating and multiplying and expanding and growing. Do you know, yesterday I was walking around out here with Jerome talking about replanting all of our parts from the parking lot job. And, he's, he, and I was saying, oh, we're going to have to come up with some budget for, um, to buy plantings. He says, you don't need any plantings. Do you know how many plants you have here? We just dig stuff up. We split it up. We put it next year. You won't even know. And I'm like, seriously? See, life is for itself. Life is always expanding, always growing. And to me, that feels a lot like love. So God is love because we say God is love. And it's easy to say God is love because we look out a life that is affirming and expanding and for itself. The self-givingness of spirit to itself is the power of love. And so can we love others as we are loved? Do you see, we put on the mind of God, we borrow the mind of God, and we become more loving. And then we become the fulfillment, the fulfillment of the law of love, the law that God is love. We are here to love. Now, here comes the critical question. Can I see my neighbor as God sees my neighbor? 
happens. I mean, it's all words until we do it, right? I can put a lot of really good words together, right? But it doesn't mean anything unless we get out in the world and we practice. You see, if I am created in the image and likeness of the infinite love, and the infinite love is all there is, then darn it, my neighbor must also be created in the image and likeness of the infinite love and must also be intrinsically valuable and worthy of love. Mm. And worthy of me releasing the bullet of my judgments that I'm walking around with in my heart, releasing that. Acknowledging, oh, you came to teach me something. Thank you. You've been a great guest. Time to go now. How you doing? You got a neighbor you've been kind of like, maybe not feeling so loving toward? And so what is the commandment? The commandment is in a particular order, isn't it? The commandment is love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. And to me, the particular order is very, very important. What comes first? Love God. Love that source energy that is right where you are, that has given birth to you. And love your neighbor as yourself. And you know, I used to think that this meant I had to love myself first before I could love my neighbor. <clears throat> I, I, I need to learn to love me and then I can freely love my neighbor. That's an excuse, you guys. Grow up. We practice loving ourselves by loving our neighbors. We get better at loving by being loving. I, I, I get better at loving by practicing loving someone it's hard for me to love. By borrowing the mind of God and walking in the very footsteps of love with conviction and with purpose. And then all resistance simply falls away. Seek first the kingdom. See, this is all the same teaching, isn't it? We love God first. We seek first the kingdom. And all resistance falls away as all else is added unto us. Our good unfolds because we become the embodiment of the law of good. That is, as Charles Fillmore told us two weeks ago, we insist on the good until the good appears. Love insists, love does something. It insists that my mildly irritating, okay, really irritating neighbor is good. <laughs> it's getting better. I'm getting over myself, right? I'm getting over, and my neighbor hasn't changed. Who's changing? Who do I have the power to change? Sometimes I really wish I had the power to change my neighbor. <laughs> now, there are some lies that some of us have been taught about worthiness. Maybe some of these are familiar to you. One of the lies that I was taught about my worthiness is I'm worthy as long as I'm doing good. If I'm being good, or if I'm doing good, I'm worthy. And if I'm being bad, or misbehaving, or not following the rules, I am no longer worthy. Anybody taught that lie? Value, intrinsic value. You are worthy of love, and you are worthy of loving, regardless of whether you are being good or doing good, and particularly doing good. You know what happens to people who do nothing but good? They wear out, right? Especially if they're giving from a place of trying to fill this empty hole of unworthiness, right? It just wears us out. We can give forever from, a, from the well of love, right? But when we try and give out of our unworthiness in order to prove our worthiness, we simply wear out. There's another lie I was taught about my worthiness from people who 
you know, this is just like, they were well-intentioned, yes? They didn't mean any harm. They, were, they thought they were teaching me to be safe in the world, right? So we don't, there's no blame or shame or not loving them, right? We just acknowledge the bullet in our chest and welcome it as a guest and see what it has to teach us and then we move on. The second one that I was taught was that I'm worthy when other people like me. Now, you guys, if you want to learn the one about you're worthy whether people like you or not, become a minister. <clears throat> because you stand up here every week and you say things and people give you their opinions when they leave. <laughs> you to do that i love hearing your feedback right but you know people give you their opinions all the time does that make sense i hear a lot i hear a lot <laughs> about a lot of things and you know i finally in ministry had to get to a place where my job is not to be liked by everyone i hope you like me i try and be loving and kind and likable because that's just part of who I am. But if you don't like me, I can't help you. It's, it's okay. I was really impressed many years ago by a woman who, um, a, a new minister came to church. This was uh, it, many years ago when I was a kid. A new minister came to the church and the woman didn't like the new minister. And she was like, I am not leaving this church. This is my church. It doesn't matter if I don't like the minister. My community is here. My people are here. This is my church. I don't care how bad this minister is. I am here. And yet that has really stuck with me since I was a teenager. That here was someone who was committed to the teaching, committed to the community, committed to the place, and the minister didn't matter. And I love that. Can we let the minister not matter? Can we be so committed to going deeper in God and loving God more fully that we use even when we don't like the minister, that's our spiritual practice, <laughs> is to love our neighbor, is to love our minister as ourselves. And so, are you willing to love yourself even if others do not, is really the question. Because the fact is, if you are doing something important in the world, some people will not like you. Amen. That's all I got on that lie. Be willing to do what you know is true to the living one within you. You are worthy of love, even if you are unliked. Third worthiness lie. <laughs> Our worthiness depends on how much stuff we have. I used to play this game. Anybody got this one? Yeah, the thing about stuff is we get more stuff because the newness makes us feel worthy, right? The problem is newness becomes oldness really quickly, doesn't it? And then I need more new stuff to feel worthy. And next thing you know, it's funny, I was talking uh, before service this morning, next thing you know, you filled up a 2,800 square foot house with stuff. Not all of which you need. Not all of which is really truly the source of your fulfillment. Another worthiness lie. Hmm. My worthiness is determined by how well educated I am or by what kind of a family I come from. Yes? Now, I don't want to downplay education at all because to me it's super important. I actually think we all need to do at least two years of college because of the liberal arts education we get in our first two years of college. I think it's really super important that because it expands our minds, it expands our experience. It doesn't necessarily give us a career, but it makes us better people. I'm a big, so, and you know, I'm a big supporter of just study, 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 classes, classes, classes. That's all I do, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> I study, study, I take classes, classes. This is my life but it does not have any impact on my worthiness or my value in the world. I do that because it challenges me and it opens me, not because my worthiness is dependent on it. The family I come from, anybody got family stuff? 
<laughs> Just asking. Your worthiness is not dependent on what kind of family you come from, how you were raised. You're, you are intrinsically valuable. And you see, these are the lies. These are the things that we were taught by well-intentioned people in a culture that is a little bent around the idea that love is all there is. So let us anchor more fully in that spiritual truth. How to be worthy? Be worthy. Just be something. Be worthy. Affirm your worthiness. Remember who and whose you are, what you belong to. Be worthy. And one of the ways you can know, am I being worthy? Am I doing the things that worthy people do? People who believe in their intrinsic value, their intrinsic worthiness, what kinds of things do they do? They take care of themselves. They eat well. They engage in self-care. They move their bodies. They feed their minds. Are you engaging in the kinds of behaviors that worthy people, people who appreciate and know their intrinsic value, are you engaging in those kinds of behaviors? How do you talk to yourself? I asked earlier, how many of you have said something, you know, not so nice to yourself in the last 24 hours? A lot of hands went up. Oh, geez, I'm so stupid sometimes. Have you ever said that? I think I said that just the other day. I was doing something that fell off. How do we talk to ourselves? What's happening in that secret place of the Most High? Our minds. See, this is our own temple. How do we talk about ourselves? What do we say to ourselves? What is our internal conversation? Oh, my God, you're so... Or, wow, I made a mistake. Isn't that adorable? Be worthy. Do what worthy people do. Affiliate with people who are on the worthiness path, if you will. This is a great place to do that. We are all learning how to embrace our intrinsic worthiness. And you know, one of the ways we do that here in our spiritual community is, is there anybody in this spiritual community you don't like? Get on a committee with them. Learn to love your neighbor. Learn to love your neighbor. This is how we're called to learn and grow and deepen. Be worthy. Put yourself in worth challenging situations. Do the things that worthy people do. And here's the second way to be worthy. Don't do the things that unworthy people do. Don't engage in the behaviors or the activities that people who do not understand their own intrinsic value, don't do those things. Love yourself enough to not do those things. You know, I, I had a conversation with my doctor recently because I smoked cigarettes for 15 years. I smoked from age 15 to age 30. And, um, and yeah, I, there, it has made a difference in my health as an older adult. Um, probably, like that's kind of what we're attributing some of those things to. And I realized when I was talking to the doctor about this and, and she was saying to me, well, why did you quit finally? And I said, you know, I was getting really unhealthy and I was about to get married to somebody who really loved me. And I realized that being able to stop engaging in that behavior was so hinged on knowing that I was loved and knowing that my unworthy behavior was calling me into a really bad state of health. And being able to face that, make it a guest in my awareness, and say, no, you know what, I'm better than this. I can be healthy, I can be strong. I don't need to abuse my body 40 times a day. I smoked a lot. 40 times a day, about. I engaged in self-abusive behavior. I engaged in behavior that 
showed not just me, but the world, my own unworthiness. So we engage in the behaviors, we do the things that those who believe in their intrinsic self-value do, and we release the things that demonstrate our belief in our unworthiness. Even if we're not quite there yet, we can start to erase the behavior, and then we start to believe in ourselves more. Make sense? And when we do that, we are doing that all in the awareness that I love God. I love God. I seek first the kingdom. This is the first commandment. I practice loving God. I rest in my prayer every day. I rest in my meditation every day. I affiliate with spiritual community. I practice the principles that we teach out in the world because my first commandment is to love God. And then it's a piece of cake to love not just my neighbor, but in some ways, more importantly, myself. So shall we practice a little bit? Let's practice being in the presence of love. Turning within, bring your attention to your breath. And feel your breath as it moves effortlessly in and out of your body. And with each and every breath, you become more and more aware of the indwelling presence of love as you. Breathing deep into the center of your body, the light of love opens and expands and becomes more and more of who you are. For this is your source energy, your source, the presence that has given birth to you and is calling you forth to be all that it would have you be. And as you anchor in this light, you recognize this light as the warmth of the sun shining forth in, as, and through you. And look what happens with a love like that. It lights the entire world. And so you feel this light shining forth from deep within you. You call forth a time that you remember being loved, being held in unconditional positive regard. And you allow those feelings to expand. Expand like the light of love that lives at the core and the center of your being. And simply breathe into this awareness now. And ask yourself this question. Who am I really? What am I really? At the deepest core of my being, the center of this light shining forth from me, who and whose am I? To what do I belong? And allow this deep inner awareness of the universal presence of love to be known as your source. And as this deep emanation of love makes itself known within you, love it back. Love from it and love into it. Unconditional positive regard. When you simply allow that to wash over you and out from within you. And it spills all over the person sitting next to you in this room.
It spills throughout this room as you allow the essence of love to make itself known as you. And it spills out and all over anyone for whom you perhaps feel unlove. You allow the essence of love to permeate all that you are. And lo, you find yourself worthy. For you know the truth of who and whose you are. And begin to see yourself now in the world, living from this place, going about your daily activities with family, your work, traffic, the people that you deeply and easily love and the people that maybe it's a little harder to love. You see yourself living from this place of worthiness, being all that God would have you be, and simply saying yes to life as it has been given you, shining the light of the sun, effortlessly and easily into your world. And as you see yourself in this experience, give thanks. Give thanks for your ever-expanding awareness of the truth of who you are, And give thanks for the source that is always right where you are. And in this consciousness of gratitude now, I close this message confident, confident that we move forward in the world with a new mind, with a new idea, with a new thought. And we allow ourselves to be worthy. And so it is. Amen.